Hi Church family, this is Pastor Josh again, uh, welcoming you to another lesson in the series of Mistaken Identity, where we cover different passages of Scripture from God's Word that sometimes believers uh, can get wrong and misunderstood. And this misunderstanding can oftentimes lead to mistaken identity, where we mistakenly understand who we are or we mistake God's identity. And these are somewhat famous passages of Scripture that are usually well known and so today what we're going to do is we're going to look into Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. So if you have your Bibles, you want to open them up to Philippians chapter 4. By way of introduction, I just want to remind you uh, to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you like, hit the bell button, the notification button, and that'll help you get reminders whenever we're posting a video online. And it will help you um, stay updated whenever we have those live stream events as well for Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into God's Word tonight. We're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. So if you have your Bibles open there, I'm going to switch over to my Bible here. You can see I, hi I uh, have the verse highlighted here for us tonight, Philippians 4, 13, which says, again, many of you know this and probably have it memorized. It says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I think sometimes the problem with this verse is, uh, believers can kind of get a little bit carried away with it. They see that phrase, I can do all things. And the problem with that sometimes is we start treating God a little bit like a genie. Like we see that phrase and, and we just think, wow, I can do anything. I can do all things. And sometimes we get carried away with that. We might mistake what it actually means. And the problem can uh, be that we think to ourselves, well, I can get anything that I want. I can accomplish any feat as long as I'm a believer, as long as I have faith. Or maybe we think that God will just um, bring me anything I want in life uh, as long as I'm a believer, or he'll give me some special skill or talent um, to help me do whatever I want. And again, this kind of makes God into uh, a genie for us. He just does whatever we want. I can do all things um, as long as I ask God, and he's just going to give it to me, right? Um, like, for instance, can I slam dunk a basketball? Um can't. Uh, so what if I just prayed to God really hard and I said, God, I can do all things through you. So you give me that special ability. It's not going to happen, is it? Uh, or what if um, I ask God, um, can you give me super strength so that I can lift a thousand pounds, um, which I can't do, obviously. Um, but if I pray to God and ask him, and if I have enough faith, will God do that for me? Uh, well, that's not really what Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 is talking about. Uh, when I was a kid with my uh, siblings, my, my brothers especially, we used to sometimes think about or pretend to have superpowers. And we thought, you know, just uh, kind of like little Bible nerds that we were, maybe God would give us this superpower to be able to do, you know, amazing things like run really, really fast or have super strength or uh, to be able to fly or something crazy like this. And is Philippians 4.13 telling us that? Well, I can do all things, anything, as long as God lets me do it. If he gives me the power, then I can do it. Um, well, of course, God has the power to literally do anything for us. He's all powerful. So yes, he could make me slam dunk a basketball. Uh, he could give me super speed. He could give me strength and intellect and power. But what I want to argue tonight is that Philippians 4.13 is not actually speaking to the Christian skills or talents, nor is it speaking to some mysterious superpower whereby believers can accomplish great feats of intellect or strength simply by tapping into God's power. So what is this passage actually talking about then? Well, to understand that, we have to look at the context. So if you have your Bible open there, I want us to look at some of the verses before um, and then maybe some of the verses after verse 13 to get an idea here. And the first thing I want to point out is this key phrase. The Apostle Paul says, um, I can do all things. And I'm just going to underline all things. As this phrase here is really important. This is the phrase that I think can sometimes get Christians hung up. All things. What does all things actually mean? Does all things mean anything and everything unrestricted in any category? Um, well, most of us might think, well, that phrase, all things, it just simply does mean everything. I can do everything or anything with God's power. Uh, I remember back when I was in seminary, I had a Greek professor, uh, really loved him. 
Uh, he gave um, so many great insights into the understanding of God's Word, and especially the New Testament, of course. And uh, I remember one time asking our Greek professor the simple question, you know, well, what does this phrase, all things mean? And we all thought this would be an easy one. You know, all things just simply means everything. But he went on to tell us this, and I'll never forget it. He said, all things means all that it intends to mean in the context. Right? Let me say that again. All things means what it intends to mean in the context. So all things in the Bible oftentimes refers to a list or a restricted group of things that the author has already talked about. So not necessarily all things in every and any category, but all things in the category that the author has just informed us of. So what is the category of circumstances or things that the Apostle Paul has just talked about uh, for his reader here, for the Philippians? Well, he talks about all things, and if we go back a little bit into verses 10 through 12, we see what some of these circumstances are. So he says this, he says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you've received, uh, sorry, you revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. So earlier on in the Apostle Paul's ministry, he was in need, but the church in Philippi wasn't able to, they weren't able to help him, obviously, for some reason. But then he goes on to say, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. The context behind verse 13 then has to do with this. He says in verse 10, sorry, 11, uh, whatever situation I am to be content. He goes on to say in verse 12, in any every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Here's the category that the Apostle Paul's talking about where verse 13 fits in. He's talking about situations and circumstances in which he's found himself, where he's been in need, in want, he's been hungry, he's been weak, he's been uh, struggling, but then he's also found himself in other circumstances where he's had all of these blessings, and he's abound in abundance. And in all of those circumstances, he says, I've learned to be content. And he still goes on ministering the gospel, serving people, bringing them the truth of Christ in every and all circumstances. So this is the context surrounding this phrase in verse 13, I can do all things. What is the category of all things? What is the all things that the Apostle Paul is referring to? Well, he goes on to say that I've learned to be content. So that's one of the things that the Apostle Paul can do in all of these circumstances. He can be content and in every circumstance, even if he's struggling or feeling incapable and weak, he knows he can continue to be content in the Lord. And the other thing he knows that he can do in every and all circumstance is be a minister of the gospel to serve people and show them the truth of Christ. If you back up even a little bit more in the text, he says in verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. He's teaching. He's helping the people in the church know how to live and what attitude to have and how to behave. But then he goes on in verse 9, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace be with you. The Apostle Paul is serving these people by bringing them teaching about God, by helping them understand the truth about the gospel. Uh, he's kind of wrapping up in verse 9, kind of putting it all together and saying, you know, this is what I've been teaching you. This is what you've been learning. Uh, but essentially the Apostle Paul, what he did in every church was bring them the gospel, the truth about Christ and how to live and walk in a manner worthy of their calling, of course. So what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And this is what the Apostle Paul was doing when he says in verse 13, I can do all things. He knows he can be content in every circumstance and he can still bring the gospel of Christ in every and all circumstances. God is going to enable him to do that. So this is what the phrase all things means. This is the category of all things. Again, the Apostle Paul isn't saying that the believer can do everything and all things in an unrestricted way 
In other words, that all power, omnipotent power has been opened up to the believer. No, not in that kind of sense, not in a worldly or earthly, selfish kind of sense. But in a much more important sense, the Apostle Paul is saying, I can do all things that matter. I can do all things that God wants me to do. I can do the things that I really need to be doing. I can be content in every situation, um, even when I don't have everything I'd like to have, even when I feel weak and incapable and I'm brought low. But then in other situations, when I'm abounding and I have abundance and things seem, seem to be going really well, I can still serve God and I can still be content in all of those circumstances and situations. So I can do all things. I can do what God has called me to do in those circumstances. So what is some good theology that we can take out of this? What are some good things that we can learn as believers? Well, firstly, we learn what not to do, really. We learn as believers that God has not called us to to ask him really for selfish things. And maybe if you're a student, you, you've had this experience before. You've gone into a test or an exam and you thought to yourself, God, would you just please give me an A, help me get through this, bring out all the knowledge in me to be able to get a really good uh, mark or grade on this test. Um, I can do all things through you, God, so you just give me the ability. Is that really what Philippians 4.13 is talking about? Well, I think not. What about as athletes? I hear athletes all the time quote this verse and they'll say something along the lines like, like, I can do all things through Christ. So God, you help me go out on the field of competition and defeat my opponent. Uh, meanwhile, the opponent's probably saying the exact same thing. So again, Philippians 4.13 isn't really about that, is it? It's not really about getting ahead in life and, and being more successful than other people, doing all things that sort of way. You know, it's not about our finances. It's not about business decisions. It's not about getting ahead in life and acquiring more things or becoming more skilled and having more abilities and talents. That's not really what Philippians 4.13 is all about. And God may bless us with some great skills and talents. He may make some of those athletes as good as they are at those things that they do. And he may give some of you great intellect to be able to go um, and do wonderful things in the fields of science and mathematics. And maybe you're a great student. You're able to get great good grades on tests. Well, Philippians 4.13 isn't really telling us that God is going to do all of those mysterious supernatural things to give us all of those earthly wants. Philippians 4.13 is actually about us being servants for God. It's about us doing all things in accordance with serving God on mission for Christ. So this is verse is meant to be a great comfort for us and hope for us as believers that God has called us to bring a gospel, the gospel of Christ, to people that we come in contact with in the world. He's given us great opportunity to be able to serve him and his word promises us. And Philippians 4.13 is a promise to us that in every circumstance we face in life, we will be able to accomplish and find opportunity to serve people, accomplish the mission that God has given to us. God will empower us in every circumstance, no matter what we're facing in life, to be content and to be able to serve him by bringing the gospel of Christ to somebody in need. So this is what Philippians 4.13 is all about. When the Christian reads this, we're not meant to think, I can do all things. That means God's going to make me do whatever I want to be able to do. I'm going to be able to get whatever I want to get. I'm going to be able to go out and just uh, be so successful in every aspect of life. That's not really what Philippians 4.13 is all about. Philippians 4.13, though, is a great, profound source of comfort for the believer because we know, just like the Apostle Paul did, as we're serving God and striving to draw close to him and bring the message of the gospel of Jesus to other people around us, that whatever circumstance we face, we will still be able to do all those things that God's called us to do. And all things means being content in what God's given us and striving to bring the message, the message of the gospel to people who don't know him, um, to make disciples of Christ, to show people how to follow him, to be an example and to bring the word of truth to others. This is what it means to do all things and to be able to do it in any and all circumstances, whatever situation we find ourselves in in life. So this is what Philippians 4.13 
is all about. And if we've had some misconceptions about that as believers, maybe we've prayed in certain ways that just weren't really theologically right or accurate. Maybe we've had perceptions about our lives or about who God is that just wasn't really quite accurate or right. Hopefully this uh, study in Philippians 4.13 has given us just a little bit better understanding about who we are before our God. And yes, it may not be true that God is going to give us these superpowers like we see exploited on TV. He may not make us the greatest athlete. He may not make us the greatest intellect. But what God will do for the believer in accomplishing all things in our lives, he will give us the ability, he will empower us to be content and to bring the message of the gospel to people who are in need. And that's what Philippians 4 is about. So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope you've been blessed by looking into God's word tonight and that you'll go forward and have a safe and healthy and happy week. Uh, until we see you again, God bless.